Hey there, West Michigan. Thanks for watching 13 Weather Plus. I'm meteorologist Michael Barons. It's been an up and down weekend. Temperatures well into the 60s on Saturday. Didn't make it much out of the 40s for many today. We just barely touched 50 here in Grand Rapids, and those temperatures are going to continue downward as we head into the week ahead. Speaking of that cold air, it was really close enough to the ground to create a little bit of tiny hail with some of those showers today. Some grapple mixed in there as well. This picture came in from Marcy and Kent City had a couple reports of this real tiny grapple kind of hail across the region today, but there were a few peaks of sunshine. We were telling you would be mostly cloudy today, but some sun may come through and that's what Linda got here in Holland. Tulips are certainly getting ready for May. Of course, if you have any pictures you want to share with us, we always love to show them here at 13 on your side. You can find me on social media, meteorologist Michael Barron's on Facebook and at Mike Barron's WX on Twitter and on Instagram. The temperature today, like we said, hit 50 Grand Rapids, 48 Muskegon, 49 in Holland, well below the averages for this time of the year, but still inside three degrees with our forecast. Told you 48 hit 50 brings our accuracy streak to 19 days in a row with just three misses in the last month of forecasting. Tomorrow, temperatures continue downward. That's why 13 weather ball is lit up in blue as cooler temperatures are in view, blinking bright with, yes, both rain and snow in sight as we head through tonight and through the start of the week. View the 13 weather ball sponsored by Countryside Greenhouse of Allendale. We're looking at temperatures just past 10 o'clock that were hanging around 30s and 40s in West Michigan. Light rain reported at numerous locations. The winds overnight will be backing down, so fairly light wind conditions through early tomorrow. But as we work our way through Monday and into Tuesday, windy conditions will develop, and at times we'll see wind gusts that will go over 30 miles per hour. So expect a pretty uh, blustery start to this week. In fact, here's the 24 hour forecast from now. Rain and snow chances continue throughout the day on Monday and they'll last now into Tuesday as this low pressure system slowly works its way across the Great Lakes. Highs tomorrow only expected right around 40 degrees and will stay mostly in the 30s and low 40s through Tuesday before warmer air comes in by later this week. Your day planner shows a low tonight of 35 degrees. Scattered rain snow mixes in as we head towards sunrise on Monday. Monday itself scattered rain and snow throughout the day. 40 degrees rain and snow chances again continue into Tuesday, but they'll become more scattered temperature up to 43 for Tuesday afternoon. The radar as about 10 o'clock shows scattered showers across the region. We look down toward uh, just to the north of South Bend and we actually see the radar picking up a little bit of snow at this hour that likely going to increase again in coverage as we head into the overnight hours tonight. Snow up in the UP. They've been picking up some heavy snow Snowfall that's going to continue into this week as well with this low pressure system again slowly coming across the state. Hour by hour forecast here shows scattered showers as we head into the overnight again towards sunrise that starts to mix more and more with snow. Don't get too scared with the big blob of blue here on the map. This is likely going to be mixing with rain most of the time. Scattered rain and snow continues throughout the day on Monday into Monday night still pretty consistently becoming more scattered as we get into the day on Tuesday. Winds coming in from the northwest throughout the day bring us the chances for continued scattered snowfall and scattered showers as we head through Tuesday and Tuesday afternoon before this finally all comes to an end as we head into Tuesday night and Wednesday with drier weather on the way for Wednesday and pretty much the rest of the 10 day forecast. Things will quiet down after we get past Monday and Tuesday. Snowfall potential out there, not a whole lot. We're not expecting anything to really stick around other than maybe some grassy surfaces, the car, slushy spots on a bridge or overpass can't be ruled out. Chances for some accumulation do increase those you head up north of US 10. That's going to be the best chance for some snow, but nowhere near what they're expecting right now in the UP and what they've been dealing with in the UP too. Still between now and Wednesday could see upwards of a foot in some locations, especially some of those upslope areas would not be surprised to see some fairly impressive snow accumulation, especially for the first couple days of May. Thankfully, we don't have to deal with that down here in West Michigan. Temperatures out there for your Monday will be in the 30s on the lakeshore, close to 40 with windy conditions around. Same for our northern zones, upper 30s, close to 40. We'll be right around 40 degrees from Grand Rapids down to Kalamazoo. 13 on your side, 10 day outlook. <coughs> 
Temperatures stay in the 40s for the first two days this week, but we will move back into the 50s by Wednesday. A fairly quiet weather pattern takes hold for really most of this forecast. We climb to the 60s through next weekend, and by the end of the forecast, May 9, May 10, we are looking at temperatures that'll be back into the 70s. Yeah, our forecast didn't mention that snow to start this week, but summer isn't far away and there were also some warm days there near the end of the 10 day. And what that means is more outdoor locations and activities will be opening in the weeks ahead. Speaking of which, MDOT's roadside parks are now reopened for the season. There are 85 roadside parks across the state, even though the parks will be open. MDOT says drinking water may not be turned on for some until later in May once testing of the park's water system is finished. You can find a full map of the parks on MDOT's website. With that warm weather expected as we head later into May, you may find yourself out in the sun more often as well. And you should remember to take steps to protect your skin. One such step is to take screenings, and this week you can get your skin checked out for free. Coral Health is hosting a skin cancer screening on Tuesday. There are two locations, Spectrum Health Integrated Care Campuses on Michigan Ave in Grand Rapids and Lakewood Boulevard in Holland. No appointments are necessary. Just walk in between 5.30 and 7 p.m., and they will take Take a look at any areas of concern. It's not a full body scan, though, because with skin cancer, early detection is the key. And unfortunately, the numbers are rising. Uh, the amount that we're seeing over the last few years has increased dramatically. Uh, so the American Cancer Society kind of predicts that we might see, you know, nationwide, like over almost 100,000 cases this year, but 8,000 of those individuals are going to die from their disease. Early stages of skin cancer can often be treated with surgery, but later stages need more extensive treatment. Heading into the summer, remember to wear SPF 30 or above when outside, reapplying every two hours, and try to avoid direct sun between 10 and 2. Warmer weather also means lake weather, and since 2010, 1,170 people have drowned in the Great Lakes. So far in 2023, there have already been 15 drownings in the Great Lakes, five of those happening in Lake Michigan. To help put an end to those deaths, a piece of life-saving technology could be coming to a lakeshore town near you. 13 on your signs, Nate Belt got an early look at the technology Friday afternoon. Rescue crews from all over the lakeshore came out to South Haven today for a demonstration of brand new life-saving technology, the Emergency Integrated Life-Saving Lanyard, or EMILY. My goal is to get these things in every single area where there's been drowning or could be drowning. That's why Jeffrey Lohman, a retired Navy diver, travels the Great Lakes, demonstrating the Emily drone to anyone who will listen. The drone is able to carry a life jacket to a drowning victim or even act as a flotation device itself. One time in my life where I had to rescue a person in the water in distress, I struggled with that. I wouldn't have struggled if so. that yeah, person would have had buoyancy the GoPro provided to them. Plus. A person Park Township's Fire Chief Scott Gamby attended the demonstration. Okay. He was impressed by how quickly the drone could be deployed. And there, since the Coast Guard station closed in Holland, now we're, we're waiting for Grand Haven to come down, and that's a long wait. A quickness that could save lives, and the Emily is so easy to handle. And a kid could do it. I think it has some really good possibilities. I think it adds another level to water rescue. The Emily costs anywhere between fourteen and twenty-five thousand dollars. An investment Gamby hopes the township will discuss. The level will do some more studying and taking a look at it and in uh, figuring out cost and that and see how that kind of uh, lines up with everything. And one Loman would stake his life on. I'm hoping nobody drowns here. I'm hoping that if it's here, no one will drown, of course. Yeah, I, I think it will. I bet on it. Yeah. In South Haven, Nate Belt, 13 on your side. As people and companies continue to take steps to fight climate change here in Grand Rapids, Amazon is going eco friendly. The company began its transition to electric delivery in Grand Rapids, and it's the first city in the state to do so to roll out those new changes. Amazon says 40 state of the art electric vehicles already making deliveries in the Grand Rapids metro area. They started a few months ago and have increased in the last few weeks. The goal is to have more than 100 electric vehicles operating out of the Grand Rapids hub.
So Amazon really believes in a sustainable future. We're actually looking to go carbon neutral by 2040, and that's all part of Amazon's climate pledge. These zero emissions vehicles have already delivered more than 70 million packages across the country. In addition to Amazon, Governor Gretchen Whitmer announced new jobs and an electric vehicle investment this week. She visited Hazel Park on the east side of the state. $20 million will go toward expanding three existing Michigan-based facilities to develop a new EV battery service center. It's expected to create more than 180 jobs. The expansion is possible thanks to a nearly $2 billion grant from the Michigan Business Development Program. And speaking of EVs, make sure to stay tuned next week. That's when 13 on your side puts electric vehicles to the test. You'll get a better understanding of how they work and what they cost. And we'll be taking you along a road trip around the state to see what it's like to travel in an EV. Our coverage begins Monday on the morning news starting at 430. And finally tonight, check this out. These videos are from, well, Detroit. Last night, the Michigan Association of Broadcast Awards, WZZM taking home several of them, including Veronica Ortega and Doug Grievous for sports, Evan Leonard for photojournalists, and the 13 on your side weather team for best weathercast for our winter climate special. And of course, we've been enjoying this particular trophy here ever since we got it last night. Second year in a row for the 13 on your side weather team. Of course, thanks to my colleagues, Chief Meteorologist George Lessons, Samantha Jacks, and Blake Hansen. It's that's certainly something that we cannot do without a team effort. And of course, now that you're up to date on the latest weather here in West Michigan and some weather news from around the state and the country, you can always find more at 13 on your side.com or by downloading 13 on your side news and weather apps. For now, though, thanks for watching 13 plus. I'm meteorologist Michael Barron's.